A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from. Enough about how awesome you are, back to the video. Welcome back. Some exciting news today. We will be looking at the Unreal Engine 5.2 roadmap and Unreal Engine 5.2 Preview 1 is already available for download in your Epic Marketplace uh, launcher if you want to. Uh, in addition to that, we will be looking at some of the different announcements that were made during the GDC talks, which is currently ongoing as of recording. Starting out, we have the roadmap. In the roadmap, we can see a bunch of different things here. We can see that there have been improvements done to path tracing in Unreal Engine 5.2 and a bunch of different uh, points here about that. They are also continuing to improve the quality and performance of Lumen. Here we can see that they're mentioning that they are handling global illumination better with occlusion when it comes to thin geometry. So things like nostrils and ears and the um, cloth and such things to make sure that the shadows are being uh, softer in those situations. Improvements to uh, Nanite are being done as well in regards to a lot of different features like custom depth, stencils, light channels, global clip planes, a lot of things here. So you can see that overall there are a bunch of different notes here concerning uh, light, which is good for all of us who wants to see uh, our things look prettier and more realistic, of course, but maybe a little bit more enticing to those people that are really into the lighting parts of Unreal Engine. You can also see that we have a category for shadows here that's mentioning the improvements of ray traced shadows. Um, in addition to that, we also have substrates and substrates uh, were handled in the GDC talk and substrates in short is essentially a um, continuation of how materials work in Unreal Engine. So these will be uh, having more advanced functionality and features available to them to allow uh, more advanced looking and realistic looking uh, materials in your world. This will be more consistent with how some other existing uh, material system exists in uh, other programs uh, to uh, make it more cohesive and uh, uniform and uh, uh, standardized, I suppose. So this was previously called Strata but is now called Substrate. This is an experimental feature and uh, with all things experimental when it comes to Unreal Engine, it's not necessarily going to end up at all like it is in its current form, or it could possibly even uh, not be added into the engine at all. Uh, however, they seem to be putting a lot of effort into Substrate, so I believe that it will be something that they actually uh, continue and finish on in the future. Next up, we have some virtual assets and developer tools that are available here. I could not see them mentioned here, so I will just mention them uh, as a side note. Uh, during the GDC talk, uh, Epic uh, mentioned that there is something called PCG, which stands for Procedurally Content Generated Framework which will be a plugin that you can uh, make use of in Unreal Engine 5.2 and then it will be nativized later on, I believe. Um, it is essentially a procedural system that will allow you to generate environments uh, quicker and easier with as a sort of complement to handmade uh, environments. Um, so you can sort of configure how a assemble assembly as they call it uh, works together with well other assemblies and then you can have splines and different parts to together form uh, different rule sets that will apply to uh, the environment so that it will adapt according to how you move around key pieces that uh, will uh, make the environment sort of blend in and make it still look like it's uh, uh, natural uh, even though you're moving things around so that way you have a lot of control when it comes to general environmental design um, as well as you get the the fine and nitty gritty detailing and also the speed of getting procedural generation involved in your project as well 
In addition to that, we can also see that the character and animation uh, category gets some improvements. We have our control rig, which is getting improvements when it comes to lace digging, compilation, close splines, prevent space switching. You can see a lot of different things here. So they are continuing to improve their control rigs. You can also see that they're uh, enhancing the workflows when it comes to the cinematics and working with uh, your uh, control rigs. Uh, we're also getting some scripting exposure for uh, animating retar animation retargeting. And they're also mentioning the physics control component experimental. Uh, this one I have mentioned in the previous um, highlight episode. Uh, th this is available in the content examples if you want to uh, check this out in more detail. They're also showing off the ML deformer, which is currently in beta stage as of 5.2, uh, which is allowing you to sort of deform, for example, the skin in different ways that makes it look more natural. Um, so yeah, if that's something that interests you, you can uh, take a closer look at that as well. I do believe that during the GDC conference they mentioned something that there was um, something related to this if you wanted to investigate it further. Uh, audio, Metasounds is improving. We are getting more nodes uh, available to us to uh, generate more uh, functionality and uh, expressive ways to make sounds. Uh, we're getting uh, audio parameter modulation apparently and moving on we also have some things in the platform category some in the content pipeline and we also have some improvements on geometry tools uh, both for uh, how we can add uh, better or more different types of modeling when it comes to the tools that are already in the engine but also improving upon the geometry scripting that they implemented and uh, released in uh, conjunction with the Lyra project. Uh, in addition to that, we also have a bunch of different th things related to cinematic and virtual production. I know nothing about this field, so I can't really cover anything here. Um, here we can see some interesting things. We can see something uh, mentioned here, Chaos Flesh uh, Simulation. This was mentioned in the GDC talk as well where they were talking about how you can uh, use the mesh and uh, deform it in different ways depending on the complexity of the mesh and such. Uh, very interesting talk if you want to get to know that a little bit more. Uh, they also mentioned uh, Niagara Fluids. Niagara Fluids um, was shown in conjunction with a vehicle going through some water and essentially displaying what you can do with these systems combined. So the Niagara Fluids is also uh, becoming more and more uh, mature as development on that continues as long as well as uh, the different chaos systems which was used for the vehicle as well in the, uh, the display. In addition to this, that was not even all of it, we also got an announcement when it came to something called FAB. And FAB will be the new uh, future of what Sketchfab was, essentially. Uh, FAB will become a unified storefront, sort of a, a unified uh, collection for assets. You will have things like Megascans, the Epic Marketplace assets, Sketchfab, maybe even MetaHumes in the future. They will all be collected in a single place and it will be an engine agnostic marketplace. So regardless of which engine you use, you can get those assets here. Uh, as a creator, you will get to keep 88% uh, of the revenue, which is the Epic uh, allowance when it comes to uh, selling things on their marketplace. Um, and in addition to that, if you are a user, it should become much more streamlined when it comes to actually making use of these different assets uh, inside of Unreal Engine, because you will be able to bring them into your project really easily without even leaving the editor, and you can easily preview and see the different details of the assets as well before you actually purchase them or make use of them. As if that was not enough, in addition to that, they also announced MetaHuman Animator, which showed off some of the potency that you will be uh, given when making use of it, uh, actually allowing you to use something like an iPhone to uh, record your animations and then process it and then make use of it on any uh, MetaHuman that you want to, or a MetaHuman um, compliant setup as well. 
Anyway, that's going to be all for today. I hope that this was interesting and that you heard about some cool things that maybe got you a little bit hyped and uh, looking forward to the future and Unreal Engine in general. Um, yeah, so all for now. Keep on learning. Take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.